This is a little project I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. It's a uh, MIDI sequencer based on the uh, Arduino, or not uh, Arduino, it's written in Arduino Pico, but it's based on a, a Raspberry Pi Pico processor. So we have 16 encoders that control the steps. We have a menu encoder, a start stop button, and a shift button, which is used to uh, use do alternate functions for some of the, uh, the encoders. So the hardware on the back side is basically the, the Pico. I used the Pico W in case we uh, get Bluetooth MIDI for the Pico W at some point. And we have three of these analog multiplexer modules, 16 inputs, one output. Um, so they are used to multiplex the, all the encoder switches and the AB um, encoder signals into the um, the Pico because it doesn't have enough pins to multiplex uh, or to handle that many encoders. So the way the uh, the sequence sequencer is set up is we have um, four tracks and uh, so it's basically four voice polyphonic I guess you could say and um, each track has a note sequence, a gate sequence, a velocity sequence, an offset and a, prob a probability and ratchets. So the notes are represented by this little simple little um, piano roll type thing and um, so the the note is the this this is the baseline so this is like offset zero and then this would be if we're up to the top it's an offset of one octave an offset of minus one octave and the offsets are relative to the root note. So if we press this shift button, we get a little menu here that says what the root note is. We can change the root for each um, of these note sequencers. We have a scale. We have 10 different scales we can use. We can change the MIDI channel. We have a rate, which is the rate at which it's clocked. And if we, um, there's a, some, if you press the encoder and turn it, you can actually, um, get to another little two more parameters which is uh, to enable the track and um, uh, what's the last one I can't think of it off the top um, and then if we go to say the gates we basically just have a, a rate so we can set the, the rate at which it's clocked so the way this works is we have uh, six sequencers per track and they can all be clocked at different rates so one axis is, is normally think of it as a, if, if one times would be a quarter note you know per step so two times would be an eighth note per step and that goes up to eight times which would be a 32nd note per step and it goes down to uh, 1 16th or uh, divide by 16 which would be four bars um, i might make it longer just to, so you can get really much longer cycles um, so just to explain uh, gate's pretty straightforward uh, one thing to note is if the gate is up all the way like 100%, that, that's a tie. So in this case, then we have, you know, two notes that are tied, so they'll carry on. And this is very useful to get uh, rhythmic effects. So if we go to, the next one is velocity. I'm not really using velocity here. I don't think these synths are particularly <laughs> velocity sensitive, but some are. Um, so offset is interesting. So offset um, is like a transpose. So when we come here, with the, so the baseline again is zero, when we hit these notes, we can set a transpose of, you know, anywhere from 1 to 12 steps. So the note that's going to play on any given step is going to be the root note plus the note plus the offset. And, uh, and we also have um, probability. So probability is interesting. This is setting the probability that that step will, will uh, play and you know, it's basically in steps of uh, 10%, so 0% to 100%. And in the menu here, we have, um, we can set um, Euclidean variables. So we can set Euclidean, the number of, um, the length of, of the, um, the Euclidean the length, the Euclidean number of beats and the offset. So the length is uh, how long the sequence is. Number of beats is how many times it will be active. And then the offset is basically to rotate it around. So if I change this, we can reduce the number of beats. You can see it's much less dense now. And the neat thing about Euclidean 
um, rhythms is that uh, you can get these very interesting patterns that don't really repeat. Um, well, they repeat, but in a sort of not a regular pattern. And then the last one, we have ratchets. Um, ratchets need a little improvement. They do work. So ratchet would basically be a repeat within that gate interval. So it, it splits the gate time into... Uh, so that would be no ratchets or no repeats. So that would be one. So it would split the gate in two and, and sound two notes in that interval. Three notes, four notes, five notes. So I'm not going to use that. So anyway, um, let's play a little demo here. I've got this thing. So I have it plugged into uh, this little USB hub, which is plugged into my iPad Pro. I have uh, three copies of um, Synth Master, one copy of Copperhead running in AUM, and um, a few effects and stuff. And so it's kind of creating a little ambient piece. Um, and the, you should also note that the, uh, the sequencer does... Uh, slave to the clock so I'm sending it clock and transport commands so if we go back to the beginning here and play I can set the length of a track by just touching one of these encoder buttons you can see it shortens that sequence to uh, four notes I can have it one note if I want. Back to five. So, so what makes this sequencer really interesting is that the, um, when you get the interplay of these sequencers that can be different lengths and clocked at different rates, you can get basically sequences that essentially never repeat. Um, or you can have them repeat if you want, but if you start setting odd numbers of uh, divisors and, and lengths, you know the, the clocks just keep rolling around and they they drift out of out of phase and eventually they they will repeat but it'll take probably in some cases years for the thing to repeat um so it's a very interesting sequencer from that point of view um, i took a lot of inspiration from the uh, monom sequencer called uh, Kriya, which has a very similar setup so yeah so a fun little project uh, i'm pretty pleased with how it's working um, the code is on my GitHub if you want to take a look at it um, or build one of these. If this works out really well, I might do a PCB. As you can see, the form factor is such that it would it would fit in Eurorack. Um, I would have to add some um, CV and gates to it, um, which wouldn't be that hard to do. It could also support serial MIDI. There's a spare serial port on the, on the Pico as well. So... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where this thing goes, but um, right now I'm having a lot of fun with it.